Welcome back, everybody. It's Dr. Craig Malkin. I'm a clinical psychologist and lecturer for Harvard Medical School. I'm also the author of Rethinking Narcissism, which is devoted to helping you understand and cope with narcissism in all its forms and all your relationships. I want to talk today about a parenting style called authoritative parenting. I have had a bunch of people ask questions when I talked about longitudinal studies of narcissism, particularly the one by the psychologist Phoebe Kramer, and she looked at different parenting styles in one of them. And the questions people had were what exactly is authoritative parenting and what kind of things help with authoritative parenting. So if you like my videos, please give them a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell when you subscribe so you can see them come in as soon as they're done. I've been uh, absent for a little bit of time because there's been a lot of activity that I've had to take care of over the holidays and just managing some back and forth, but I'm hoping to for this to be the return. Authoritative parenting is something that I discuss in my book, Rethinking Narcissism, after I discuss also the other types of parenting. You can think about it in terms of the way it contrasts with the least desirable forms of parenting. If I can remember them off the top of my head, we've got permissive parenting, and permissive parenting is exactly what it sounds like. Just kind of laid back, not necessarily connected to the kids, and just letting things happen. That is permissive parenting. It could be warm or it could be cold, but they're not really intervening in any particular way. Then there is authoritarian parenting, which is, again, the names are well suited to these styles because authoritarian parenting is controlling, it's rigid, it's inflexible, it's focused on punishments, it's focused on consequences, without any real attempt to connect with children, understand them, understand their point of view, that is authoritarian parenting. And both types of least desirable parenting style permissive and authoritarian are connected to all kinds of problems that kids happen have over time as they develop not surprising as i've mentioned in previous articles and videos they're also connected to trait narcissism and unhealthy narcissism when it starts to turn towards pathological authoritarian parenting actually is correlated with measures observational measures of healthy narcissism uh, measured by a guy named Paul Wink, where he had clinicians observe and describe the parenting styles that they were seeing. And also there were observational studies of the kids themselves. I love this kind of research because it's not reliant entirely on self-report. It's reliant on clinician rating and, and what people are actually seeing. And it turned out that those two styles were strongly correlated with unhealthy narcissism, authoritative parenting as measured by something called uh, the, the parenting style report or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it's called. It captures those different kinds of parenting styles. And it's actually a self-report measure. So it, it was a different, little different from the other measures in the study. But in this case, I wanted to do what I've done before in previous videos is read you some of the sample items. I've got them right here on my desk so that you can get a flavor for what authoritative style is. And this is straight from that scale, that report scale on parenting style. Respects child's opinions, encourages expression, talks it over, reasons with child when he or she misbehaves. Future plans include the child's preferences and trust child to behave properly even when not with him. There's a sense of what's going on. Those are representative items that really captured authoritative parenting in, in the research. I give an example of the kind of intervention that would be associated with authoritative parenting in rethinking narcissism because it captures both dimensions of warmth and structure. That is really what authoritative parenting is all about. That is building a bond, a connection, understanding children as they are from their point of view, understanding something about their little inner lives and their subjective world and caring about that 
that is the warmth dimension, but also structure that is having consequences, limits, rules. These things help create an experience where kids feel secure, not just because they feel close and connected and cared for by their parents, but also because they know that people are in charge and are keeping things running smoothly, including that child's behavioral development. So the example I give is what I call firm empathy. There's this child, and I described this in the chapter on parenting, who is six, I guess now. He's afraid to go on car trips because it just so happened that they went on a long trip and after that his grandmother died and he had a lot of other fears too. Now the tendency here, or the temptation I should say, would be just to accommodate that and work around it. And you actually, of course, have to take into account that kid's anxiety and try to help him with him in some way and, and hold his hand and, and, and talk to him about what's going on. But the one thing that you don't want to do is then do bypass the experience entirely of going on long car trips. So firm empathy is, I know that you're afraid of these trips now, sweetheart. We have to go. It's really important. Do you want to bring your elephant doll with you? Do you, do you want to bring your favorite blanket? Whatever will help you feel more comfortable. I understand that you're anxious and I want to help you. And we also have to go. This is a kid who was pitching fits about having to get in the car. That's a good example of firm empathy. that we got warmth and structure. And I loved the example. And the reason I put it in the book is because it, it's a situation where you have to be really sensitive to what the child is, is struggling with. But you also have to say, we have to do it anyway. And this could be true of consequences, of rules. You know, if the child misbehaves in some way, I understand you're angry. I understand, sweetheart, that you're upset. And also, you can't break things. You have to follow the rules. It's not okay, right? So there is another little off the top of my head example of firm empathy and also authoritative parenting. So I think, but hope that's helpful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you'd like to hear more about authoritative parenting or any other topic that it touched on. Uh, thanks. I look forward to sharing with you more.